So, sweeping. We've all heard about it. We've all seen it. We've all been mesmerized by it. Now today, we want to learn how to do it. So in today's lesson, what we're going to discuss is the technique used on guitar known as sweeping. Sweeping is basically where you take your pick and instead of picking every single note, you know how when you pick a string it feels like you're actually kind of snapping your wrist a little bit just to get that string out. Well, sweeping is much different from that. Actually what you're doing when you're sweeping is uh, you're kind of letting the pick fall. You're kind of just letting your hand with the pick inside just fall onto the strings. And then when you're going the opposite direction, you're letting it fall the other way as well. So you're not actually picking the notes, you're sweeping them. That's basically what we're going to be covering. Uh, so first we're going to do shapes that are used commonly when you're sweeping, and then we're going to talk about some other sweep exercises, and then possibly go over some uh, sweeps that only use three strings and then some sweep patterns that use more than three strings. So here we go The very first one we're going to talk about is actually starting on the sixth string on the twelfth fret We're going to start way up here because that's generally where most of our sweeps are played anyway in our soloing Well, that's not totally true. But anyway The very first shape we're going to do is an E major arpeggio sweep and it's even it's E major mainly because it starts on the 12th fret, but it's also got that E major look to it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have your first finger. Here's the way the sweep is going to sound. First of all, and there's the whole sweep, slowly then fastly. Now let's talk about how to play that. You have your first finger starting on the 12th fret. Then your pinky's going to hammer on to 16. Big stretch, so watch how you're positioning your thumb so you can reach for that note. Then your third finger, which is your ring finger, is actually going to move over to the fifth string, 14th fret. Then you're going to roll with that same finger onto the 14th fret of the D string. And you're going to take that one off as you put the second finger down to the 13th fret of the G string. And you're going to take that one off as you put the first finger down to the 12th fret of the B string. Then you're going to roll over to the 12th fret of the high E string. And you're going to go up and hammer our, you can actually pick this note really with an upstroke. You're going to pick the 16th note or 16th fret on the high E string. And then you're going to pull off, come back down exactly the way we came. Make sure you don't hit that wrong note like I just did. So the next shape we're going to talk about uh, is actually going to be rooted on the fifth string. So the next two shapes we're going to be dealing with are going to be rooted on the fifth string. So your pinky is going to start out on the 15th fret of the fifth string. It's a C note, so we're learning a C major arpeggio. And then your third finger, as the pinky lifts off, is going to go to the 14th fret of the D string. Then your first finger is going to go to the 12th fret of the G string. Your second finger then is going to land on the 13th fret of the B string. Then your first finger is going to land on the 12th fret of the high E string. And then begin going backwards by picking an upstroke on the 15th fret with your pinky onto the high E string. Pull off to 12. Come back exactly the way we came, and then always start the beginning note with the downstroke.
Your first finger is going to be on the 12th fret of the 5th string, that's A. Hammer on to 16 with your pinky. Watch where your thumb is. Make sure it's more in line with your middle finger and that it's like this, not this, but like that, behind your guitar. So 12, 16, then your second finger is going to land on 14. Now this is going to be a big roll that's coming up here, so you want to really make sure that the tip of your finger is on this 14th fret, not the others. Now you're going to roll onto the 14th fret of the next string, and the string after that. So it's going to be 14th frets on the D, G, and B strings. Hmm, sounds like taps. Then your first finger is going to move as the second finger makes its way off to the high E note. That's the 12th fret of the high E string. And you're going to do your upstroke on the 17th fret of the high E string. Pull off. Come back exactly the way you came. That's cool how all these different sounds can get, and you can kind of hear the, the melodies of various uh, themes. One thing you want to make sure that you do when you practice sweeping at home, uh, make sure that you're lifting your fingers off one at a time as you get on to the next one. Make sure that when you roll that you're actually putting the very tip of whichever finger is starting the roll on the very first string of the roll and just letting the rest of the finger fall into place after that. And then do the opposite when you're coming back. Just make sure that the tip always lands on the original string that begins and ends the roll and everything like that. So, um, Also make sure that you're clean when you do sweep arpeggios. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how to do that. Sometimes you'll you'll hear a lot of guys where you hear the first note and then the last note and then you don't really hear the notes in between. Part of that's because they need to take more time to practice not just the shape itself but they need to slow down. Slow down, let your left hand or right hand for all you lefties out there get the map of the shape that you're practicing with. So if you're practicing with this particular shape, you have to practice slowly to first just let your fingers get acquainted with that shape and then get to know it as time goes on. Because that's basically the map. If you don't know, you know the map or you don't have a map, then you're not going to know where to go if you're lost in the woods somewhere. So just make sure that you slow it down. Let your left hand get the mechanics of the shape. And then start building up speed as you go. Now, a word about the pick side of that. Make sure that you're... A couple of things that you could do to help lessen string noise. Um, you can either mute the strings a little bit, place the palm of, this, of your picking hand onto the bridge here where the string meets and the bridge intersect. Um, also, you can make sure that you're... Well, this just goes back to timing. Make sure you practice it slowly and make sure you're not picking too fast or too slow. I find myself that when I economy pick or sweep pick, I have to be very careful when I do that, otherwise I'll get off time. Uh, because it's actually, in my opinion, it's easier to get off time when you uh, sweep pick and things like that because you're just, you're letting, as we say, you're letting your hand just kind of fall and come up and, you know, and it's not quite as strict as alternate picking is, so. Something to think about for picking and uh, keeping everything clean and things like that. Okay, so that was today's lesson. Thank you very much for watching today, by the way. I really appreciate you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line. You can email me, uh, YouTube me, whatever. Hit like, subscribe, something, or comment below down there. So, okay. Uh, thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.